Hello, I'm Dr. Alegria Riva de Neira. I am co-principal investigator of our OER grant here at Colorado State University in Pueblo, Colorado, and we are celebrating Open Education Week. Today with me, I have Tatiana Johnston, who teaches in the World Languages program. And she's gonna tell us first, Tatiana, welcome. Uh, can you yeah. tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yes, uh, I've been teaching at CSU for almost 15 years already, and I teach Spanish, German, and French. Wow, that is a lot. So you are definitely a polyglot. Yes, <laughs> you can say that. Oh, and now you are also an OER author. So we really want to hear more about your journey. And I wanted to know what brought you to OER uh, at first? It was the need of the perfect book. And I don't think that really exists because for somebody, a book can be okay and it needs something or it's lacking something, but it's so hard to find the perfect book for the needs that I had with my students. And I was teaching two or three, which is a conversational class at the beginning. And I was compiling material that I was doing on my own. And I was modifying some of the exercises in the book as well. But I had a lot of different exercises that I wanted to test with students and I had the chance to do it. And some of them did well, some of them did not very well, but I had a bunch of things for, for me. And I was thinking, why not just get rid of the book and at some point um, write uh, my own text. And then suddenly the OER came into place and it was like, yes, this was meant to be. Wow, I love that story. Believe it or not, you're not the only person who started that way. A lot of people begin doing stuff on their own, supplementing materials. All of a sudden they've created all this stuff. And then the next step is to put a CC license on it. So then other uh, teachers can use them and uh, reuse, uh, adapt, adopt, remix, etc. cetera. So um, you probably came into OER like a lot of people have, and I love that story for sure. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about your projects? What is it that you've been creating and doing with OER? are. Yes, I have a couple of babies <laughs> that I've been working on. And the first one was a 2ER, uh, 203 uh, for my Spanish conversational um, class. And that one came into place at the beginning with a lot of um, struggle because I was new. I'm not very technical savvy, but I had the great guidance of you and you were able to help me uh, putting everything in the right place in the right way that it's supposed to be and it's coming up very nicely and what I notice with my students because I'm already using it this is my second semester using it is that I am able to adapt some of the things um, that maybe it was working well at the beginning when I was creating but now the need of the students is different or maybe there's something else that is going on in the world another um, Hispanic that people would like to uh, talk more about so I can adapt it very easily uh, just um, doing my um, changes in Google Doc. So I was uh, very happy about that. And my second baby is my German book. And that was uh, for two semesters, 101 and 102. That one, in a way, I have a special relationship because I love German so much. And it's really, um, a, for me, a, a pleasure uh, that I want more students to know about German, about Germany, and to be able to get this relationship with the country and with the language. And it's just very special for me. And it's working also very well. My second semester using it, I'm using the one or two. And in that one, because that one, it was more grammar acquisition. The two or three, it was more practice. Practice all the different tenses that they already have learned in all their classes in one, 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 one or two. And they just won't come to the class and just talk, talk all the time. So they had different prompts. But this one with German, they had little babies starting right in 101. And I wanted from, for them to really get the grammar without all the difficult and sometimes boring explanations. And I'm very to the point. And since I'm very, um, in, in, I, I like to see charts. I like to see um, things. I'm, I, I learn like that better. So my students have the same thing. They get charts, they get 
just the main most important things um, that they need to know for grammar. But we get to practice, we get to do a lot of conversations, we get to do a lot of writing, we get to talk about different countries that speak German. So we have so many different ways to practice. I love that. And now I have a third baby that is going to come soon. And that's the 202, uh, Spanish 202. That is also a book that will let them um, develop their skills, um, writing and talking, because the most important thing at the end of the day, when you are acquiring a new language is that you want to express yourself. You want to go and travel and talk. You don't want to write essays. You want to write love uh, poems. Maybe some of them they will, but the majority, they really want to go and talk. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. It is a, it is amazing to hear just the range and also that you could tailor um, the grammar explanations, for example, to something very simple so the students can just acquire that and then get on with practice, which is the most important part. So definitely a philosophy that you have that you could put into your OER. Um, I can't wait to uh, see other German programs using them and, uh, and seeing how they can adopt and adapt to their student population. And I also love that what you were saying about being able to update even to new happenings in the world um, mm -hmm. it, so quickly. I think that's a wonderful thing as well. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy to hear that you have been able to do that. So uh, you obviously uh, have been working a lot on this. What do you think are the benefits of what you're doing? What do you think are the benefits for your students and your program? Well, the main one I think is uh, zero cost to the students. They don't need to spend $200 for a book that they, some of them may use it quite a lot, but others they will just use it for one semester or not. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, those books are just going to be collecting um, um, Dust. I guess just think the word in, in German. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you were going to spring a German word on us. <laughs> um, and, and I can't think the word in English right now. Polvo. Polvo. Um, dust. Yes. Dust. Oh, dust. Yes. Yeah. I was just like, I couldn't think that it word in English. And um, um, but this book, it's um, something easy to access, is fun, is happy precise, direct to the point. And um, the benefit is that they are, when they come to the class, they're not going to be first intimidated by a huge book with a lot of explanations that they can feel like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? Second, there's no cost for them. They're not going to be thinking oh, how, how much I spent here. Uh, the third one is this fun because learning a language shouldn't be like that. No matter if you're in college, college doesn't mean that you're more serious uh, learning languages. No, we can still um, um, enjoy it while we're doing that. Oh, I love that. And you mentioned something that I think it's definitely worth highlighting, which is the access part of it, um, that the students have your books from day one, right? Or even before the class, because mm -hmm. they can access them. Uh, on our general web page, so then they can have them from day one versus waiting for the loan to come in, and then they fall behind, etc. So yeah, I love that access piece as well. Thank you for bringing that up. Wow. So uh, you have mentioned a few satisfactions of doing this. I can tell just in the way that you express, you even refer to them as your babies. But can you expand a little bit more uh, on what satisfactions have you gained from engaging? with uh, this creation of OER for your classes? Um, I think that for me, the mostly is that my students are getting um, a lot of things in the way that I think they're going to get more benefit. And let me explain that. Um, remember that I told you at the beginning that there's no perfect book, but for me, this is not perfect, but it's close to what I really wanted to get from this class. In the 203, for instance, they're getting a lot of prompts. They can work without me telling them what to do. They can see it in class, face-to-face -face or in class via Zoom, and they can just start talking from the moment they are with a partner. And I don't have to tell them, okay, now let's go to page 234 and do this exercise because they have one prompt after the other. 
And I see them when I'm with them face to face, they're just talking. It's that noisy class, but I love that. And then I go uh, from group to group, listening to them and giving them some suggestions to improve and things like that. Same thing, face to face or, or Zoom, same um, results. So I, I feel that they are getting something that for me that, uh, to be able to talk more, to practice their Spanish. That's in two or three. In German, since they are l tools, most of them, and I learned that language as well. It was not my first language. Um, I think that uh, they are getting an easier way from an L2. Most of the books, and I don't have anything against um, people that write the books and that they have their native speakers. No, of course, I'm doing that also with Spanish. But sometimes we tend to explain too much or that makes sense to a teacher, it makes sense to, to you, but not to an L2 that is starting from the beginning. And I think that I accomplished that with German. Um, that's also what I noticed with my students that there's no, a lot of doubts, a lot of um, um, questions saying, what, what was that? They, they get it very easy because it's just to the point. Right. Yeah, so I can see that your greatest joy and satisfaction is to be able to translate your philosophy of language learning into the materials you are creating to see your students grow their, their abilities. And I can see how that would be very, very satisfying for sure. Now, as there are a lot of uh, joys on, on um, authoring an OER and, uh, or whatever, adopting, adapting, whatever you know, it is that we end up doing, uh, there's also, I'm sure, some challenges. So could you share some of the challenges that you've had and how you have overcome? I think the main challenge to write a book like this is of time. You really have to have, spend a lot of time doing this. You really need to be focused on what you're doing and um, material that is free videos in YouTube or things that you need to create your, yourself because you cannot borrow from somebody else, pictures, things like that, or that also you need to be looking for them and spending time doing that. That was, I think, for me, the most challenged time and um, trying to find the right video, for instance, for the book. And also a challenge that is going to happen in the next few years is that those videos that we're using right now may not exist. So we have to keep um, updating our text. Um, also, as I mentioned to you that sometimes we need to also adapt. Maybe we mentioned a, a couple of people, uh, famous Hispanics, for instance, but there's some somebody else that is coming later that we will have to mention. Or things change in the world that we will need to adapt. That will think is going to become a challenge. Yes, I agree. And I love that you brought that up because both the stewardship and the sustainability of OER become really important once they're out there as well. Um, just how do we keep up with them? How do we keep them fresh? How do we bring in new technologies even into it, right? So so yeah, definite, definite challenges, but nothing that we cannot face um, if we put our minds absolutely. to it. And oh, of absolutely. course, you know, if, if we have... Um, uh, the support of our institution and the backing, the financial backing of our grants. Um, yes. That's definitely very, very well spent money in my, mm -hmm. in my opinion. <laughs> so you have already uh, embarked in quite an adventure. And I was wondering if to end our uh, interview today, you could uh, maybe share some um, advice with people who are just starting out? You know, what should they do? What should they consider? Yes, I think that the most important thing is not to think that this is a very daunting task. It seems like it is because it's like saying, I have to start from scratch, writing this huge book with all the things. Where do I find the time? Where do I find um, um, all, all, all the, the material? So yes, it may seem like that, but it is not, it's easier than you think because you have experience as a teacher. If I'm talking to other, another teacher, I will say that you have already been teaching this class for a long time and all those exercises, all those times that you were saying, oh, I wish this exercise should be like this. Oh, I prefer them to um, work on this other thing and not, and you modify it. So all those things are already in your mind. So it will be very easy. In the moment that you start, it's going to just to flow very easy. 
Um, another uh, recommendation will be not to be afraid if you're not tech savvy. I'm not at all. Uh, I, I even uh, Google Doc was so scary for me. So there are a lot of things, and, and right now Google is my best friend. It's, I love it. I really love it because it's so easy. So just not to be afraid of that. Um, that was one of the main things for me that I was afraid of. Why am I going to get a very um, difficult um, program that I need to work with? Google Docs, best friend, easy. They look very nice. You can adapt in all the time. So I will recommend that. And the other recommendations will be not to be afraid, to be funny, to be a little bit silly, and use color. I know that pastel colors work better for OERs, um, but use it. It doesn't have to be a boring, white, plain book. And use Bitmojis. Right now, we have all this technology that is easy. Don't be afraid of it. Bitmojis was scary at the beginning, but right now, it's second nature. So use that. Use funny things. Make it like your baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love this advice that you're giving us. I think that not being afraid is important. And also going back into what it is that we already have. So many teachers already have a lot of things that they have produced. And it's just a matter of reorganizing them and, mm -hmm. uh, and um, getting them in, in a format that can become an OER. So I think all these recommendations are great. And oh, and I have to say the, the fun part for sure. I love because especially in world languages, um, I agree with you. We want our students to have fun with the language and a little color, a little silliness goes a long way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wow. Well, I am so thankful uh, to you for spending this time with us today and uh, sharing some of your amazing experiences with OER. I'd like to wish you the best on all your future babies that you will be creating. And thank you so much for caring about our students to the degree where you have even overcome a lot of your fears in order to serve them well. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. I had a great experience. Yay. <laughs> Bye.